Sculptures are three-dimensional objects. A sculpture can be made from many different materials, stone, metal, glass, wood, plaster, or rubber. Today, we will be making a sculpture using plaster casting. Sculptures are a common art form that have been around for centuries. Sculptures have been found from ancient Egypt and Rome. There's modern sculpture and ancient sculpture. Let's take a look at some of them now. Michelangelo is a famous artist from Italy. He was well known for his sculpture. He would sculpt out of a stone called marble. His most famous sculpture, the Statue of David, was made out of a large discarded piece of marble, which means it was going to be thrown away. And he created something beautiful out of something that was meant for the garbage. I'm so impressed with his detail and his ability to sculpt and chisel out of stone. Here's how large the Statue of David is. I was able to go to Italy for myself and see the Statue of David in person. I was amazed at the detail. The next sculpture we'll take a look at is the Praying Hands, and it's located right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's the world's largest sculpture of praying hands. It was made by artist Leonard McMurray. He had it cast in Mexico. This piece of art was also inspired by famous artist Robert Dürer, who didn't actually sculpt the hands, but he drew the praying hands. This is artist Louise Bourgeois, and she's known for her giant spider sculptures. You can see these at local museums around the United States. I'm going to introduce you to artist Klaus Oldenburg. He was known for taking everyday objects like spoons or paper clips and turning them into giant sculptures. This is called modern sculpture. Let's take a look at some of his designs. This is artist Jeff Koons. Jeff is known for his sculpture as well. His sculpture is modern, and he's taking an everyday object like a balloon, and he sculpted it to a very large scale. Today, we will make our own modern pencil sculpture. We will use plaster and other materials to make our sculpture. We will have guest artist Cassie Stevens, who created this project, help us with this lesson today. To begin our sculpture, we need to make an armature, and we will do this by using a toilet paper tube roll and some cardstock paper, which is a firm paper. We're going to cut it out in such a way and mold it in such a way where it will look like the top of a pencil, and we'll tape that to the top of our toilet paper tube. You will have a toilet paper roll. and a piece of cardstock at your table, as well as a stencil you will trace. Lay it on top of your cardstock and trace around it with a pencil. Make sure you go in those little divots that have been cut out. Cut out the entire piece of cardstock that you just stenciled on, and you'll cut into those lines that you drew. This is important because this will help form that piece of cardstock to fit onto your toilet paper roll. Bend it to where it has a point at the top. And the places that you want to take that piece of tape and tape it together so it looks like a birthday hat or a party hat and it has those frayed edges coming out. With one hand, hold that pencil sculpture point to the toilet paper roll and tape it down firmly. You might need about six to seven pieces of tape to really get it to stick. Well, so with one hand what I did was I held down my sculpture and the other hand I used tape to fasten it. You can also leave, leave it on the table and go around to make sure it stays on tight. You want it to stand up straight so it looks like a pencil and once you have that done you're ready for step two. Artist Cassie Stevens will explain the procedure on how to add 
plaster molding, and also paint. To make a sculpture of a pencil, first step, trace your template. It's a half circle template with a bunch of notches around the edge. You could simply trace the half circle all the way first and then do the notches or do it like I did. Just make sure you trace the entire half circle and add those notches. Next up, you're going to cut it out. This will be the top part of your pencil. The pointed part. We are going to magically transform this flat piece of paper into a three-dimensional form. Think about what the top of your pencil looks like. What form do you think we're going to create? If you think cone, then you are genius level. That's it. Starting with the flat side at the top, you're going to begin to roll a cone, just like an ice cream cone. It's a little tricky, it helps if you kind of bend the paper to get it used to the idea of turning itself into a cone. Once you've got a cone, make sure that your toilet paper tube will fit inside. It should be like a hat where the hat fits right over the tube. Once you've got that in place, you're ready to go ahead and tape everything together. So the first step will be to tape the cone shape. Once you've got that secured, then again, make sure that it fits and you're going to add tape around the edges. You'll want to make sure that your cone is sitting vertically. It isn't tilted at all. It might help if you have a friend hold it still while you tape. Once it's taped into place, then your armature is created. An armature is the underneath part of a sculpture. Congratulations, you just made a toilet paper tube with a cone on top. I know what you're thinking, but don't you worry, it will soon become an amazing pencil sculpture. Once your armature is complete, now we're going to cover it with plaster gauze, or you could use paper mache. We are using plaster. It's the same medical supply that somebody would have wrapped on a broken bone to help keep it nice and safe as the bones are healing. You're going to take one strip of plaster, dip it in the water, and then make sure to squeegee off all the extra or excess water. Then take a finger and just kind of drape it and smooth it down. Now this is important, so listen carefully. When you are doing this with plaster, you'll need to really squeeze out all of the water. Water is a little bit of an enemy for your toilet paper tube, because if your tube gets too wet, it could start to cave in and collapse. Same with the tip of your pencil. So that's why it's so important that you squeegee out all that water and then smooth it, but don't add any extra water. I know when we work with clay, we sometimes add a little water to our finger to get things to smooth. You don't want to do that here. You're going to want to cover your entire pencil, the tip, and then, of course, the sides. You'll need to use plaster. If you have some little peekaboo places where the toilet paper tube is sticking out, it's okay since we're going to paint over it anyway. Make sure, though, that you don't have any lumpy plaster, so take that finger and smooth it. Just remember not to add more water. Last but not least, you're going to need to cover the bottom of the pencil. And there you have it. It's that easy. You might even notice that the plaster, it dries really quickly as the water evaporates. It's going to become a lot more hard. If you do see some big peekaboo spots, go ahead and cover them up. Now we'll need to let your pencil dry, probably for about an hour, and then we can start to paint. Why don't we just wait until the next art class? Because you have some hand washing to do. Now let's talk about how to paint your pencil. We're making a pencil, not a color pencil. So we're going to use traditional pencil colors. Start with the bottom of your pencil. It's a lot easier. And I'm beginning with pink for my eraser. I am going to rotate the pencil with my non-dominant hand. That means the hand that don't know how to draw. It's going to be turning the pencil for me while my other hand is painting. And this will help me create a nice straight line. Once my eraser's finished, I'm going to work on the yellow part of my pencil. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between the eraser and the yellow part of the pencil. I will later, later be adding the ferrule. That is the metal part that you often see on a pencil. The ferrule is what anchors the eraser and the pencil together, it, holding it all together. And we will be adding that with metal, just like a real pencil. 
But for now, you can leave a little bit of a space as you're painting that little space in between the eraser and the pencil where the ferrule will go. Don't forget to paint your pencil all the way down until it starts to go in diagonally. Where it goes in diagonally will be where the wooden part of the pencil shows where it's been sharpened. Notice that I'm always holding my pencil at the very tip. This means my hands are staying nice and clean and I'm able to tur continue turning the pencil as I paint it. That'll be pretty tricky though when I get to paint the graphite on the pencil. Remember, pencils aren't made with lead, they're actually made with graphite. So I'm going to be holding it or standing it upright to paint the very tip or the end of the pencil. Ta-da! Now I'm ready to paint the end. I might get a little bit of pain in my fingers, but after all, it is art class. That is okay. If I were making a color pencil, well, I would simply pick a color for where the graphite or the lead is and then add that color to the side but I really wanted to make a pencil so that I could have an eraser and then work on the ferrule. Now, let's talk about that ferrule. We're going to be doing something called metal tooling. But once again, the ferrule is that little metal part that holds the eraser to the wooden part of the pencil. For this, you're going to be using some tooling foil and you'll need to be extra careful with the edges because they can be kind of sharp. As I'm working, I'm using a dull pencil, and I'm also doing it on a piece of foam core, which is a little bit of a cushion. That's helping me create lines that are both dented in and popping out. Lines that are dented in are called debossed. Lines that are popping out are called embossed. Once my ferrule is complete, then you can bring it to me, and I will be sure to wrap it around your pencil, or in fact, you could do that, and then I will hot glue it all together for you. Can't wait to see your pencil.